2006 and 2007 were by far the most heavy and famous titles years. The rest of them are not, so we can go back to a top 5 per year. The most popular title of 2008 was Toradora, which is still very famous and liked romcom for going somewhere with the romance, but it's otherwise very typical in terms of anime stereotypes and generic school jokes. Second was Soul Eater, which is still fondly remembered for its setting and Zani characters, but the interest has died almost completely after the arachnophobia arc, because it ran out of juice and everybody jumped ship to the next fad. Third was Black Butler, which is by far the most famous Fujoshi bait anime of that decade without actually bothering to do much with its own premise. It's supposed to be a murder mystery dash drama, but it ends up being just a cute boy and his queer relationship with his overpowered hot sexy butler. There is nothing else to it, it's just a disgusting fetish. Fourth was a Spice and Wolf, which has become a meme. They kept saying it's very deep because it's about the economy, but in reality everybody was just lusting over a naked hollow wall scrolls. Plain ridiculous, there is nothing deep about it. And number five was a certain Magical Index, which is still airing to this day, and it is one of the most popular light novel adaptations of all time, when it's just a typical battle harem with a convoluted terminology. It's completely retarded and people are just watching it because they like the waifus and an overpowered edgelord villain. From hidden jewels worth checking out, there is Birdie the Mighty, which actually bothers to go beyond a typical empowerment fantasy and becomes a psychological drama in the second season, Kaiba, which is a sci-fi mindfuck, and Detroit Metal City, which is a parody of death metal bands. The most popular of 2009 was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which is the best action-adventure shown to this day for having a fairly short and complete story, making good use of its secondary cast, and delving into some pretty interesting themes without leaving them hanging. For once, the most popular title of the year coincides with the best of the year and arguably of the decade. I can't say the same for the rest of the titles, which are fairly passable. Second was Fairy Tale, which is the exact opposite of Full Metal Alchemist in terms of quality. Ridiculously long, repetitive, badly written, makes bad use of its cast, relies on fan service, and yet it had a huge following because the majority of anime fans are man children who only care about waifus and friendship. Third was Bakemonogatari in its infinite sequels and prequels. Often described as the thinker's harem, it has been blown out of proportion by pretentious overthinkers who kept analyzing symbolisms and claiming there is no fan service because it's all in the protagonist's mind and therefore it can be interpreted however the fuck you want to. The toothbrush scene is not sexy, it's deep. And the lowly molestation is not creepy, it's funny, so don't put me in prison, judge! The fourth was Kayan, which is a pretty looking but ultimately shallow moe shit slice of life, about girls who learn how to play music by drinking tea and eating cookies. Also overblown in importance by pretentious overthinkers, most of which by deviant lolicons who only care about waifus and pretty colors. And the fifth was Kimi ni Todoke, a generic school romance that blew up in popularity because uh, there was nothing else to hype at that time, and got forgotten soon afterwards. As for Hidden Jewels, there is just Red Line, one of the best looking rule of cool movies that took several years to be made, almost bankrupt the studio that made it, and very few went to see it because it took that long to come out and everyone had forgotten it by then. 2010 is fairly monotonous in what was popular since they were all shallow, rule of cool, and made anime fans to look like idiotic degenerates. The most popular was Angel Beats, which is everything wrong with modern anime. Pretty colors, cute girls, juvenile comedy, high schools even if the setting has nothing to do with them, and the thing that is not developed, a plot that is rushed, and a huge fan base of idiots who don't care about proper storytelling as long as it gave them the feels. Second was Durarara, which is the same thing as Bakano from a few years back. It's cool stuff happening without any actual objective and can get pretty aimless from a point on for anyone to care. Third was High School of the Dead, which was praised for its pretty colors, as well as anime finally having their own Walking Dead variation, before the manga cast stalled the manga and eventually died, forever leaving the anime as an incomplete rule of cool and heavy on edgy series that makes anime fans to look like degenerates for liking it. And the same thing can be said about the fourth most popular title, which was Oremo. It's a disgusting light novel adaptation about a guy being sexually attracted to his own sister, but that was not a problem for most anime fans, because she was cute and an otaku who wanted to publish her own lesbian lolicon light novel while playing lolicon porn games. There is nothing wrong about that, you're just close-minded, the show is amazing. 
and the fifth most popular was Made Sama, a generic reverse harem comedy that came and left and nobody gave a shit about it ever since. What a trashy year! No wonder the show I liked the most was Tatame Galaxy for being all about anti-escapism and is still to this day the best underwatched anime of all times. And I can throw in Panty and Stocking as another hidden jewel. It is also a sleazy comedy for degenerates, but it's also a love letter to western cartoons, has a fantastic soundtrack, and doesn't try to oversell itself as deep.